Hello and welcome to this video on rational functions. We're going to look at how to sketch graphs like this and this where we have a polynomial on the top and the bottom of a fraction. Before we dive in, if you would like a quick refresher on reciprocal functions, which are similar but where the top is just a one, a lot of the same concepts apply. So you might like to check out this video first before coming back to dive into the rational functions. Otherwise, here we are. So we have a linear function on the top and a quadratic function on the bottom. So we want to start by finding our vertical asymptote. And in this case, that's going to occur when the denominator is equal to zero. So solving that quadratic on the denominator will give us two solutions, x is zero and three. So we'll have two vertical asymptotes for this graph. I should mention we should check whether the numerator is also zero at that point. In this case, that's not the case. So we will have a vertical asymptote or two vertical asymptotes. Now with the other asymptotes, because here the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, as x gets really, really large, the whole thing is going to approach zero. So we get an asymptote at y equals zero. And in the next example, we'll have a look at the case where the degree of f is larger than the degree of g. In that case, we need to do a little bit more work to find out that non-vertical asymptote. But now let's move on to the axis intercept. So we won't get a y intercept because the graph is undefined when x is equal to zero. But we will get an x intercept if we solve when y is equal to zero. So we just take x minus four as zero, we'll find an x intercept at four comma zero. So notice that it, the graph cannot cross the vertical asymptote because the function is undefined. But it can cross the horizontal asymptote which only talks about what the graph approaches as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Okay, so stationary points now, we let the derivative be zero. We'll need a quotient rule to calculate this derivative. So derivative of f times g minus f times the derivative of g all over g squared. And when we want to solve when that's equal to zero, we only need to consider the numerator, okay? So it will be zero when the top is zero. So if we let that quadratic on the top be zero, we can solve that and we'll find two stationary points when x is two and when x is six. Substituting those values in, we can find that when x is two, y is one, and when x is six, y is one ninth. So in the middle section of the graph, we know there's no axis intercepts there, but the graph must approach the asymptotes. So it must be a local minimum there. Now for the right hand side, when x is six, we can see that we must cross at x is equal to four. So it must be a maximum turning point in order to come back down and approach that horizontal asymptote. And then approaching the vertical asymptote at x is equal to three should probably just extend my graph a little bit just to show it approaching the horizontal asymptote. And we'll actually also have a point of inflection there. And we'll talk more about points of inflection in the next example, but that's where the second derivative changes sign. In this case, where the gradient stops decreasing and the graph starts leveling off. And on the left hand side, if we just plot in one more point, say when x is negative one, now the graph can't cross the axis again, but it has to approach the asymptotes. So the shape will look like this. And that's it for the first example. So feel free to watch that again. Otherwise we'll look at another example. And this one is different because the numerator has a larger degree than the denominator. So our first step is going to be to divide through to express it in quotient remainder form. And that will be necessary for us to see that non-vertical asymptote. So I'm going to use a long division method here and just putting those zero terms in. So we have all the placeholders and my process is divide, multiply, subtract. So first step, x to the four divided by x squared is x squared. Write that at the top and then multiply x squared by x squared minus one. Write that underneath. And then we subtract to work out our remainder. So in this case, 
our remainder would be positive 1x squared. Then we bring our last two terms down and repeat the process. So x squared divided by x squared is 1. Probably don't need the 0x there. Multiply and subtract. And that's it. We have our quotient and remainder. So we can write our function as x squared plus 1 plus our remainder divided by x squared minus 1. And in this case, we can actually factorize further because we could take a negative 1 out of that fraction and the denominator we can factorize as x plus 1, x minus 1, and then that x plus 1 will actually cancel. Uh, but I could only cancel that if x is not negative 1. So that it's important to keep that in mind because now our graph cannot exist when x is negative 1. So we're actually going to have a hole in it. We're going to have a hole when x is negative 1 and that's where y would be 5 over 2. So I've sketched the hole before I've sketched the graph. Okay, but let's keep going with the rest of the graph now. So the vertical asymptote, that's when x minus 1 is 0, so x equals 1. And the non-vertical asymptote, that's our quotient, y equals x squared plus 1. So actually to the left and right, we're going to approach a parabola. For the intercepts, well, first let x equal 0. We can calculate that y equals 2. And for the x-intercept, if we let y equal 0, this equation, we probably need a calculator to solve that, giving x equals 1.35. So with that information, we could actually sketch in the shape of the graph. But perhaps let's go and do the stationary points first and then come back. So to differentiate, rather than using the quotient rule, I can take the quotient remainder form we had and differentiate that. I think that's easier. So that's our derivative. Um, solving that equals to zero. Again, that's not going to have a nice easy solution, but we can use our calculator to get x is negative 0.3. We can find the y value using substitution and then label that on the graph. So x is negative 0.3, y is 1.86. Now for the inflection point, those occur when the second derivative changes sign. So the second derivative does need to be zero, but then we also need to check for that sign change. I have another excellent video on points of inflection, so you might like to watch that one either now or later. But for this second derivative, if we let it be 0 and solve, we find there is actually a nice solution because we get x minus 1 cubed equals 1. So we end up with x is 2. And going back to our graph, we can find that when x is 2, y is 4. And if we look at the shape of the graph, to cross the x-axis at 1, go through that point at 2, 4, and then approach the asymptote, there is going to have to be a point of inflection there because the second derivative was negative. And then after x is 2, it's going to curve back up. So we do have a point of inflection. For the left side of the graph, we can start at our turning point and come back towards the vertical asymptote and on the left side approaching our parabola and that will complete our function. So quite a lot in that graph. Just to review, the first thing we did was that long division to express our function in quotient remainder form. Not only can we then see the non-vertical asymptote at x squared plus 1, but it also we found that we had a hole in our function when x was negative 1, and it made it easier to find the vertical asymptote and the stationary points. Hope you found that video useful. Enjoy sketching your own rational functions.